Hey, it's David Jennings, founder of Systemology, and in this video, I wanted to challenge your thinking around business systems. Quite oftentimes, people have this picture in their head of what they think a business system is. And quite often, I will blame McDonald's for that thought that you have in your head, because you might think that a systemized business looks like McDonald's, where they have every aspect of their business documented down to minute detail. And the reason they've done that, quite oftentimes they might be recruiting a 15 year old kid off the street and they want to have them productive and flipping burgers by the end of the weekend. And to do that, they have been very prescriptive on exactly what needs to be done. So the business owner sees that and they think, ah, oh, that's what a systemized business is. However, your business isn't a hamburger business. There's a good chance you're not recruiting 15 year old kids that have, you know, they're unskilled and you need to quickly skill them up. You might be hiring A players who have great insight and thought and magic that they can bring into your business. And if you don't give them the space for that because the system is so prescriptive, you're not gonna give them the opportunity and you're actually gonna repel these A players. So there's this fine line that you need to sort of juggle. And one of the ways that I present it to our team is that systems are actually an 80% solution. So we love to hire really smart team members and <clears throat> I wanna give them the latitude in the moment to be able to customize something uh, depending on what the situation needs. So we talk about this idea of systems are an 80% solution. They need to bring the final 20%, which is the human, which is the tailoring, which is the customization to the moment. And they need to remember to add the human. They need to bring those magic moments for clients and prospects. So we might have a system that goes through step one, step two, step three, step four, and you need to email this to a client. Now imagine this email is only 80% of the way there. You as one of our team members will need to customize the final 20% to tailor it to that particular client to make sure that they feel like, wow, this is for me. This was designed uh, for me. This email was written for me. Uh, I am not just a number or a cog in a machine. I am someone who someone has taken unique thought to and written this email template. Now. If we customize that 20%, even though it was worked off a template where 80% of it was already written, the person who receives that is going to feel like that it was 100% tailored. So really, business systems, they are shortcuts for team members to go, hey, here we've got a way of doing things. This is the process that we take. And if you're a brand new team member and you're learning things for the first time, what a great way to learn. And then once they sort of start to learn that, they understand there'll be situations where a system might deviate or there's an exception or the client has ordered a different color or something needs to change in this scenario. And I don't want to have them not bring the human and not think. So another thing that made this really stand out for me, I remember reading an article with Reed Hastings, the founder of Netflix, and he talked about when they first started systemizing the business, they over-systemized and they systemized everything because they wanted to make it dummy proof. The only problem is only dummies wanted to work there and they couldn't attract intelligent A players because of the way that the systems were structured. So you need to be really careful when you start to design your systems and your culture and giving your team members and letting them know, I want you to think. This is part of it. Don't underestimate the intelligence and what your team can bring to the table. If you're looking for some more concepts like these, make sure you check out my book, Systemology, and I'll catch you in the next video.